I'm like one of those lesbians that looks more capable than they are. I'm kind of like the Barbie that's in the box that you're not supposed to play with. This evening started out nothing short of magical. I was so excited to be opening Winterween with No One Needs to Know and to get started annotating it. Shortly after I began the book, someone banged on my door and my shepherd is very protective, so she went into full attack mode and wouldn't settle down. For these situations, the vet prescribed a sedative for her, and it was the first time I had given her this sedative. She had a terrible reaction to it and had to go to the ER. For the rest of the night, she wouldn't leave my side, and that was perfect because I didn't want her more than hand's length away from me. It made me remember all the ways that fear can show up in one's body. It made me remember that fear has a taste, cold metal, and blood in my mouth and I didn't know if either of us would survive the night. I can't imagine life without my dog. I don't know how I survived before her, and I have no idea how to survive after her. But thankfully, we both made it through the night, and she's doing just fine now. Hey demons, it's me, your boy. We think we're funnier than we really are. It's the next day. Akasha had an episode, like had an emergency. We had to rush her to the vet because someone banged on our door. She's very protective and she struggles with aggression issues. And we try and keep her heart rate low, like her stress level low because she used to have heart disease. And if you've been around for a minute, you'll remember when she was going through her treatment and we were up freaking mess. Our vet gave us trazodone for emergencies. She said, give her two. If that's not working, give her three. So the last couple times that we gave her two, it didn't seem to have any effect. So this time I gave her three. Within 15 minutes, this dog was slithering along the floor and pacing, panting, and you could see her heartbeat beating on the side of her ribs. I'm absolutely freaking out. Mind you, this is made even worse by the fact that I had scheduled a repair for my iPhone that day. I went to my appointment. I still had to wait 40 minutes, even though I had an appointment, which is what it is. They're busy at the store, whatever. So 40 minutes go by, and then a person comes out and says, I don't have enough time to fix your phone, and you have to leave it overnight. That gave me really really bad anxiety because of emergencies and I just had a feeling that I really really needed to make sure that my phone was on my person. I also am directionally challenged because of my dyscalculia so I was like having anxiety about even having to get home and Akasha was having her episode and needed to go to the vet. I couldn't drive her to the hospital. I didn't know where a hospital was and even if I pulled one up on my laptop or whatever I still wouldn't be able to follow the directions. So I was frantically texting a friend. She came and took us to the hospital and it turns out that she just, Akasha just needed to wait it out. She is fine. It was a really, really hard night and I didn't, obviously didn't read because I was monitoring her and having a heart attack and dealing with all of this drama. So it is almost noon and we're going to pick up the phone. Our friend is driving us, the friend who came through to take care of Akasha. She stayed overnight to make sure that everything was going to be fine and in case we had to rush to the hospital. So it's just been a whirlwind but I did start, we, no one needs to know. I brought it with because I'm emotionally attached to this book now. It is so good. The blurb is Gossip Girl Meets Big Little Lies and we cannot stress how accurate that is. And I loved Big Little Lies. I read it for my Gabby Controls My Week video last year and it was incredible. So next time you see me, we're gonna be doing sprints and I will update you after the sprints, but I hope that you're having an increíble day. Also, outfit of the day. Peep, bye.
Look at this incredibly sexy photo a friend took of me. All right, it is somewhere around one in the morning. Tonight was beautiful and very eventful. The sprints were excellent. I'm pretty sure I got to about page 70 in No One Needs to Know. And then during the sprints, I switched to October Witches, which is a charming middle grade about the this family of witches who only gets their powers in October. And the family's trying to figure out how to break that curse. After reading about 70 pages in both, we went to this really beautiful queer market in St. Paul with a loved one. And I got so many beautiful art pieces for the home. And it was perfect because I, the decor that's been up on my walls, with the exception of like the fact that it's Christmas decor still, the decor that's been up on my walls has been here for about three years. And I vowed once I took these Christmas decorations down that I would replace it with new art. So it was great that I got to go to this queer market and get all of this beautiful art from queer vendors. And I'm going to be putting that up as soon as I take these decorations down. So now I'm gonna go to bed and work on those two books and I'll talk to you in the morning. Oh, and then after that, we went to the arcade and it was so fun. Bye. Actual footage of my father pushing his children away. Hello, welcome to day, what is this? day three of winter week. I am still in my comfort shirt. So I'm making another order from my merch store and I'm very seriously considering ordering another of this exact shirt because I cannot seem to take it off. Since it's the start of the day, I am working through my morning routine and to-do list, which involves my dishes. So I'm doing my dishes while listening to the audiobook for Vim Byers del Norte. And I'm only a chapter, a few chapters away from concluding it, but I had to take a break because tears were welling up in my eyes because this book is just hitting so much closer to home than I ever could have anticipated. If you're unfamiliar with it, it follows the life of a young woman named Nena who had a very, very close best friend and also romantic relationship with her friend whose name was Nestor. And something happened causing Nestor to flee at when they were children. And he returns to the ranchero when they are adults. And Nena is carrying nine years of hurt and rejection and betrayal and therefore wants nothing to do with him. But just as these people are attempting to strengthen their rancheros because of threat of white men coming and stealing their lands, they are in the midst of civil war and this causes Nena and Nestor to be forced into proximity. And it's a 600 page novel where these two Mexican young people are just trying to work through the things that have divided them and been barriers to their love. And it is the most believable, like will they, won't they, what's it called? Like the Romeo and Juliet where you can't be together but you want to. It's just really hitting because of the very real barriers that Nena faces to love. The duty to Mexican family to marry another familia that can strengthen the ranchero so that they have better defenses when white men come for our land. And this is something this is a history that impacts my family on my Mexican side and I just had no idea that I was so angry about it until listening to this book. And it's just frustrating the way that the theft of Mexican land, the conversion of that into United States land has been erased and what that did to indigenous Mexican people, to our cultura, to our families. And I'm just so frustrated because on top of this, these two kids just want to love each other. And there's all of these barriers. The conflict is that they're also facing vampires on top of it. And vampirism is a metaphor for white people bleeding the land, stealing, theft. And, um, and basically in the book, white folks are using vampires in order to attack Mexican lands, to attack and kill Mexicans so that they can gain footing over their lands and their people. And it's just a very nefarious form of cultural and literal genocide that just really frustrates me. The reason that this is hitting so hard in particular is because Isabel Cañas is 
incredible at bringing her characters to life. Nena and Nestor feel like real people to me. And it's just really hard to see both of them struggle to be loved. And Nestor struggles because his land was stolen from him as a child. And so he's been working his entire life in order to afford a ranch so that he can ask for Nana's hand. The history of being indebted to, in being a peon and being indebted to the patron of the ranchero is difficult because the patron of the ranchero takes the majority of his earnings, takes the credit, and this makes it damn near impossible for people, for men working the ranchero on the lower ends to get lands of their own. And so he's feeling feelings of worthlessness, of not having family. It just really is hitting. So I'm going to stop talking about this, but I just wanted to go on and get my feelings out because I'm very frustrated. And I completely see why everybody was like reading this book and loving it last year. I was just still unprepared. And it's so good. It's so beautiful. And if these two kids don't have a happy ending, I'm gonna lose my fucking cookies. <laughs> like, I'm gonna fucking lose it. <sighs> Alright, back to your scheduled program. I mean, I might as well give an update for last night. I went to bed at about 3.30. I did not read any more of October Witches, but I did read more of No One Needs to Know. I'm about 50 pages from the conclusion. It is just delightfully juicy, delightfully dramatic. It, it leans into the drama, the drama side as opposed to the thriller side. Most of these kind of commercial thrillers do, right? It's all about the cheating husbands, the scandals, all of that fun stuff, the politics of like trying to get these kids into the best, the best schools, even though they're already in the best fucking schools. And it's, it's good. I'm enjoying it for what it is loving it for what it is. I'm excited to pick it back up. And last night was really beautiful. I don't think I made any footage of it, but I watched Fantastic Fungi with my friend and I journaled. It was my third time watching this documentary about the properties, the powers, the abilities, and also the makeup on a biological genetic level of mushrooms and fungi and what fungi do for the planet and have done and how they are the oldest organism on, on land. It's just so fascinating and this time I was able to go through and write things down and make a journal spread because I retain information best by making taking notes and it's just really exciting and after I finish my dishes I'm gonna do my journaling other than fantastic fungi yesterday I have not journaled at all this year so these are the journals I'm going to be working with today Stunning. We love these. I love Mira Patel's journals, but I haven't worked through one. So I'm going to be updating both of these. This one is Made Out of Stars, a journal for self-realization. And this one, Start Where You Are, is a journal for self-exploration. Both of these are really incredible. And if you're unfamiliar with her, she's a South Asian woman who... I believe does her own artwork and then they have a prompt and then artwork associated and they are truly engaging beautiful ways to explore yourself. The other journal, the Start Where You Are journal is equally formidable and they're both very accessible. I got, I think I got this one at Five Below for $5 and this one I believe was like $16 on Amazon years ago. At the end of December I was sent this journal this is, it says, Worlds Within... What? Worlds Within Pages Await, the way that the text goes threw me off, but isn't this beautiful? And they even put my name on it, which is so stunning. So this is going to be my reading journal for the year, because every single time I try and do my own reading journal without structure, I fall off after August. So this is what this looks like. So cool, right? And then there's a notes page. It's a very thorough, very well-designed journal. And dark green is my favorite color. I love green, in case you can't tell. And these two journals have been very important in my mental health over the last few years. I think I got these in like 2018. This one is self-care, a day and night reflection. You fill this out during the day, right when you wake up. And then you can check in in midday if you want. But I do 
my day check-in and then I check in at night. This one is so cool and I really, really love it. So it starts with- Get it together. It starts with you setting an intention for the day. It asks you like, you know, about your feelings, your emotional state, all of that. This is a space where you can track your food, how much you drink in terms of water, your exercise. And then this is an activity tracker that allows you to track what you've done throughout the day. And then this side is more for the nighttime, I believe. This is the reflection side and this is the recording side, which is really cool. And the final journal, the morning side is morning meditation and then the evening side is evening reflection. So this post was from January 17th in 2020. My goal was to focus on my health. Affirmation was that I will do great. What I'm grateful for was my alone time, my mental health, how my channel is going and being close to 6k and now i'm at 35k so that's really exciting i'm excited about reading setting up my bullet journal how i'll make space for gratitude today is by sitting and soaking up my little victories that's so cute oh my god 2020 jesse was a green bean and then for the evening reflection good things that happened I got to relax by the fire and finish a book. I video chatted with Starla for the first time since they left. The things I did to make a positive difference today. I posted about mental health on Instagram and gave tips and advice. There's a space for notes, how you felt today, and then the end of day reflection. A positive thought to carry me to sleep. I had an amazing day. I get to see my friends tomorrow. <laughs> That's so cute. That is going to do it for this update. <laughs> this was 12 and a half minutes, so I can only imagine how long this freaking vlog is gonna be. I'm so sorry for who we are as a person. All right, cuties, we're gonna go back to dishes, and then we're gonna walk the beast. We're gonna film our worst books in the bath today. Very, very exciting, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> the girl again. What's up cuties? It is about 8.30, 8.46 at night and I am about to go to dinner. It has been a really interesting day. Did I get a chance to update my journals? No. But did I have an amazing time playing in the snow with Akasha and exercising her? Absolutely. And did I get my dishes done? Yes. Did I film my worst books of 2023 in the bathtub? Yes. So it took two and a half hours, three if you count like getting ready and making the list and everything, for me to film my worst books. And that was the priority. I'm so glad it's done. The footage is so long. I am not excited about how long this video is going to take to edit, but I'm really, really excited to get it up ASAP. So that is honestly, I haven't gotten to read any more of, what is the book? No one knows when no one finds out. No one knows where you are. Upper East Side problems. You know what I'm saying? Haven't yet, but I am going to finish that before bed. Like I said, I only have 50 pages left. And my loved one is coming over for so that we can go to this incredible restaurant. We've heard really good things. It Or it looks really good, rather. I believe it's an Argentinian restaurant. We're going to take you along for the ride. And this is my outfit. I've got this black rose shirt, these burgundy pants on. You know, and then I've got a camel colored sweater that's going over it and I'm going to be wearing my camel colored boots that my mama got me for Christmas and my burgundy jacket. So it's all going to go together really, really well. I'm so excited. And then they and myself are going to come back here and we're going to watch comfort shows. We have three shows lined up that we're going to watch because we both have just had a really anxious last few days and so I'm very, very excited about it. At that beautiful queer pop-up market that I attended yesterday, I got the artwork for the home that I mentioned, but I also got artwork for her. And this is what I picked up for her. I'm so excited. So she always teases me about how I wrap things. I wrapped Christmas presents for her and their two sons. and. <laughs> <laughs> the wrapping on all of them was terrible. It's just a thing with me because of the learning disability that I have I cannot perceive if lines are straight and that is part of what makes me a terrible rapper So let me show you what her present looks like the mushroom sticker is in here and then this is <laughs> I tried to make a bow and then it ripped over here um, But it's cute, right? Like it's This is good, right? It's the thought that counts. I still haven't shown you what I got at the queer pop-up market, so I'm gonna show you really quickly and then I'll update you guys tomorrow for what is it gonna be? Day four of winter ween. It's going so fast. Bag number one. Oh, these prints. I cannot wait. 
to frame these guys and get them up. So these two, these are all from the same seller. Stunning. Also stunning and like these two together see I really wanted to give this to my loved one because it's very very much their vibe But I want to make sure that these two are together on my wall For those of you who are fans of NBC Hannibal, you will know why I selected this and also this oh, We're so excited about this like I genuinely cannot wait to have new artwork up on my walls And it was such a good investment because my artwork stays up for years and then these are the stickers that I got. Ugh. This one says dripping with love and it is absolutely brilliant, gorgeous. And then there's this one, which is definitely doing things for me. These are business cards from the artist. So this one is Eddie Rose, whose Instagram is Eddie, E-D-I-E dot makes dot things over on Instagram. Okay, that's not focusing and I'm over it. This one is Zelightful. I'm not really sure if I'm saying it correctly. Oh, this one is a sticker, which is nice. And their Instagram is Z-I dot light dot F-U-L. And this is what their logo looks like. So I don't know if you're gonna focus. There we go, beautiful, beautiful sunflower. And from another vendor, I got two more stickers. I died when I saw this really beautiful trans moth. Oh, so gorgeous. They had prints of this and I wanted it so bad, but I got the sticker for now. Amazing, and you guys know how much I love fungi, so it was absolutely perfect. Now for the good stuff, I have three Full-size prints. I have two smaller ones. Something broke off. But I bet I can like wood glue this back on. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna call one of my Home Depot lesbian friends and have one of them glue that back on. I'm like one of those lesbians that looks more capable than they are. I'm kind of like the Barbie that's in the box that you're not supposed to play with. You know what I mean? Like, just keep me on the shelf. <laughs> Shut up, Agasha. You don't pay no bills. Her ears popped up. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. Oh my god, so gorgeous. These are so beautiful. And then there's this one. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Like, best thing I've ever bought. This one is for my mother, who is an Aquarius, and I'm going to be gifting this to her for her birthday. We have birthday weeks in my family, so this is just gonna be one of many gifts and then I'm gonna do something big for her. So hi, mom, this is one of your presents. I cannot emphasize how much this gives me mama. It's very, very much her. And then the smaller prints that we got, this is, oh, so gorgeous. So fucking beautiful, you know, absolutely stunning. This gives gender euphoria. All right, my loved one is gonna get here in about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take the beast outside and I will check in with y'all after dinner. I'm really, really excited. I have not eaten today because I've been working my booty off and I'm ready to eat. I'm also feeling cute, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel very good in my body and in how I'm looking today and it's just really really nice it's great it's great and I hope you guys are having a good day too or evening or whatever <sighs> okay I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> That was my gal pal. <laughs> <laughs> we had tortellini with onions. Fucking die. Despite die. asking Please for them stop. without. Shut up. <laughs> I just wanted to be in the vlog. God, dude, I just want to be in the vlog. I just wanted to be in your life, Dad. Right. I just want to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> stamp. The first book that I'm going to stamp. Okay. I'm going to... No, no, no. Ooh! Yep, for another perfectly wrapped gift later. I'm screaming. <laughs> I'm so torn because I want to do Babel. Oh, that's right. Y'all really love that one. But this is my Illumicrate special edition of Babel. Ooh. So I'm trying to decide which is going to be the first that I stamp. Actually, I'm never selling this one, so... The Illumicrate Special Edition of Babel. Gets the stamp. It's gonna be the first book that is stamped. I love it. Look at Akasha. <laughs> <laughs> Look at 
<laughs> so she's like, how come no one ever asked me if I wanted to subscribe to this channel? Is that a so good book to read? <gasps> is the answer yes? It's amazing. Okay. It's everything. Okay. I would sell a kasha for this book. That's for rude. one dollar for one page of this book. No. That dog would be homeward bound. Oh my, I'm scared. So this is the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Should I do something like a different page first? Or should I just go for it? I think you should just go for it. Okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. How does it work? How do we just know what will happen? What if nothing happens? Oh my god, I'll <laughs> die. Please. I won't be disappointed. Like, my dad said he was coming home and he never did, so like... Right, obviously it's not the most disappointing thing that's ever happened. <laughs> so y'all are used to it. It'll be fine. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have to zoom in or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You do? Yeah. I was wondering if I should do it up a little higher, but I didn't know where the where it starts. Mm -hmm. So, but still, it's it's still good. It's actually super cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we do more? <laughs> Come on, get it. Come on. Oh, gosh, it's really fight. She's over it. She said once was more than enough. This is gorgeous. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, God, oh, God I'm falling. <laughs> Don't fall. <laughs> Hi, cuties. We are two days in the future. Yesterday, I took a mental health break, and it was very, very much needed. And then today, I've just been working on content. I finally got my worst books video edited, and I love how it came out. It took me days of editing this video and I'm just so proud of it but I have some book mail that I would love to unbox and I need to use the box that those books came in to mail out an order from my pango so I'm gonna show you what this wonderful person ordered and I'm so excited I had it all packed in this box because I'm a big fan of reusing boxes then I realized that the box has damage on it and isn't strong enough to survive a recycle so we're gonna use the box that the new books came in and all these books are unread I get sent so many books so I love being able to pass them off for cheap so all the books that they ordered are unread and they bought four books and only paid $15 for them so I'm just like really excited that I get to send out books for accessible prices so they got this contemporary black contemporary grow growing of age going coming of age called Growing in the Gray, and this is a debut from a black Detroitian author. They also ordered my unread copy of The Kindest Lie, unread copy of Joe Nesbo's The Kingdom. And finally, they ordered my unread copy of Somebody's Daughter, which is a memoir, and it talks a lot about incarceration and the way that incarceration separates black families. Because this person got so many books, I wanted to make sure that I put bonus swag in there, so they are getting a new rainbow pen, these super cute tarot themed stickers, and four beautiful bookmarks. I love that these bookmarks have rulers on the back. Holy shit, this is beautiful. This book is called Shubake Lubake, and this is by Dina Muhammad. I'm gonna have to check pronunciation, but my goodness, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Oh wow, I am Oh my gosh. Oh, and it's a graphic. Oh, it's illustrated. Oh my god. Wow. Look at this. Oh, it smells so good. That smells so good. We love that it combines colored and non-colored pages. Oh my god. This is beautiful. Wow. Look at this. Stunning. A brilliantly original debut graphic novel that imagines a fantastical Cairo where wishes really do come true. Dina Muhammad brings to life a cast of characters whose struggles and triumphs are heartbreaking, inspiring, and deeply resonant. It is a fairy tale rhyme that means your wish is my command in Arabic, Shubek Lubek. It is, is the story of three people who are navigating a world where wishes are literally for sale, mired as they are in bureaucracy, bureaucracy and the familiar prejudices of our world, the wishes that are more expensive are more likely to work as intended. And then it becomes a family. Three wishes sold at an unassuming kiosk in Cairo link Aziza, Noor, and Shokri, changing their perspectives as well as their lives. Aziza learned early that life can be hard, but when she loses her husband and manages to procure a wish, 
she finds herself fighting unreasonable regulations and inequality for the right to have and make that wish. Nor is a privileged college student who secretly struggles with depression and must decide whether to use their wish to fix this depression. Oh my god, a non-binary character. <gasps> and finally, Shakri must grapple with his religious convictions as he decides how to help a friend who doesn't want to use her wish. All of their stories are fantastical. Each of these people wrestle with the very real challenge of trying to make their most deeply held desires come true. Oh my god. And this is from an Egyptian designer, illustrator, and writer who began making comics at age 18, created the viral webcomic Kahera, originally published in Arabic in Egypt. Shubek Lubek was awarded the Best Graphic Novel Prize and the Grand Prize at the 2017 Cairo Comics Festival. She lives and works in Cairo, Egypt. Oh my god, this is incredible. We absolutely stan. I am so excited to be getting to read this beautiful East African work and reading translated fiction is a challenge that I started last year. I mean, I didn't start the idea of reading translated fiction. That's not what I meant, but it's something that I resolved to do last year. And I'm going to be continuing that challenge every single year that I read. So I am excited that this also is a translated work. And finally, we have Esther's Notebooks by Riyadh Satouf. I messed up the bottom of... Pulling it out, I messed up the bottom and I'm so mad. So I'm gonna stack this under, beneath a bunch of books and hopefully it will repair. I'm so sad. This is stunning. Again, author of The Arab of the Future. So it's, it's huge. This book is huge. Ooh, and it's matching our Camp Organ merch. But we stand. Oh, this is nice. I really like this. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, wow. This is a wordy girl. Wordy, wordy girl. Normally in my graphic novels and my comics, I don't like too much verbiage, but I can already tell that this is a really psychological in your head kind of thing. And so if it makes sense for the story, then it's completely fine. And damn, yeah. So this is like thick. This is thick. I'm really excited about this. So let's see what the Esther's Notebooks is about. It's a heartbreaking, once a week for three years, the comic book artist Riyadh Satouf had a chat with his friend on his friend's ongoing, outgoing young daughter, Esther, in which she told him about her family, friends, school, her hopes, her dreams, her fears. After each meeting, he would create a one-page comic strip based on what she said. First of all, the idea of listening to children is radical and we absolutely stand. We are a huge advocate for listening to and believing kids and giving kids space to tell their stories and treating them seriously. Automatically, I'm feeling emotional that there was a man who was just willing to listen to this child and treat her seriously. Like, I really appreciate that. It gathers 156 of those strips spanning Esther's life from ages 9 to 12, giving us a delightful look into the daily dramas of this thoughtful, intelligent, and high-spirited girl. Okay, we're going to close this because I'm getting emotional. It's beautiful. I love that I'm reading Jassad Air this month with my patrons, which is an Egyptian-inspired fantasy. The amount of stories from people of color that are getting boosted and that we have access to now are a blessing and I'm just really happy about that. I'm gonna pack this order, post some content for my patrons. Tonight I'm going to be spending with a loved one and I'm really, really excited about that. And I'm going hell or high water to finish No One Needs to Know. So the next time that I update, it is going to be what I'm thinking about these books. I finished No One Needs to Know. Heather is one of my most hated characters of all time. I would love to cover her in peanut butter and leave her out in the middle of the woods to let the ants descend upon her corpse. She is horrible. I cannot stand. Financially abusive to her husband, a whole ass liar, emotionally abusive to her kid, and I feel like this woman learned nothing. And I was so wound up that I just went right back into October Witches and I didn't finish that one until about 3.30 in the morning because it packed way more of a punch and had more roundness of content than I was expecting. But no one needs to know got on my last nerve. These characters 
got under my skin. The author did such an amazing job of writing characters that you hate to root for, or if you can't root for them, that you're just excited to see if they get what's coming to them. Some did, and some didn't. It was a really satisfying novel, even if some characters that I couldn't stand didn't get covered in peanut butter and left out in the middle of the woods, simply because it just felt real. That's the thing about this book. These characters felt real, they felt breathable. Lindsay Cameron did an incredible job of breathing actual life into these, uh, into these characters, creating meaningful conflict, making sure that the characters were different from each other, giving them nice juicy twists. It's an incredible drama book. I wouldn't call it a thriller, but I will say that it is a contemporary drama that has a murder at the end. It was fantastic. The real thing about this book is the dynamics between these characters, the schemes, the machinations, the stress that they all put on themselves to, in order to make sure that their project are the best positioned in order to succeed over others in society. Big Little Lies Meets Gossip Girl is an amazing description for this book and I highly recommend it. I gave it five out of five stars and y'all know how rare it is that I give a thriller like this five out of five stars. Hey, I enjoyed it. I five star level enjoyed it. I was surprised by bits. I loved the writing. The writing actually made me feel things at times. The fear writing specifically, the parts of the writing that were supposed to create somatic feelings inside of one's body were very effective and I enjoyed it. I can't wait to read this author's debut. I know that Gabby, I'm trying to remember what, I think Gabby didn't love the author's debut. I'm curious to read it now that I enjoyed her sophomore novel so much. So who knows, maybe like Gabby, I will hate. <laughs> and as far as the October witches go, I absolutely loved it. I loved this book and gave it five out of five stars. It took me way longer to finish this middle grade than I anticipated because it is truly full and robust. This is an incredible book to go into if you really want to see girls loving girls. And I mean that in the most platonic sense. The coven is everything in this book and so is family. The writer really brings these women to life and the love that the protagonist feels for her mother and for the rest of her family, for her cousins. And by the end of the novel herself, is absolutely heartwarming. Reading this book felt like the sun on your face. It was so beautiful to see this cozy, witchy story where honestly men were just absent. It wasn't about women being subjugated by men or the struggles of women in society. It was simply about women. And I really liked that. I thought that it was really cool. Gender honestly wasn't emphasized in the book at all. This was just a slice of life story following a girl who lives in a house that is packed with women and the dynamics between them underneath their own roof. The action was wild. The character work though was spectacular. I was very, very impressed with the author for the way that she realized these characters. You start out hating some characters and by the end of the novel, you're just head over heels for them, rooting for them. The writing was great and I think that this could be read as a standalone or a series. Judging by the way that it ended, I wouldn't be surprised if another book comes out, but the way that it ended was satisfying enough where I wouldn't be surprised to find that it was a standalone and honestly, either way is good. I anticipated that this would be my lowest rated book on the Winterween TBR and both of these are five out of five stars. So I feel like this vlog is very, very long, which means I'm going to continue my winter ween reads on my own throughout the rest of the month. What did you read for winter ween or what wintery books can you recommend? I'm sorry that I didn't get into any Camp Organ, Black Girl Magic, or my Envy Book Club books in this vlog, but as you can see, these two books got me, they had my hands full and I'm very, very, impressed by that. I like it. One thing that I'm trying to do this year is not put too much pressure on myself to just read stacks and stacks of books. Normally in my vlogs, I don't upload one unless I'm reading at least three books in them. And I do that not out of pressure, but because I simply like it. However, I'm trying to remind myself not to put pressure on myself to do things if I'm not feeling it. I really hope you stay tuned to check out the other vlogs and videos that I have coming out this month. I just posted my worst books in the bathtub yesterday and it was amazing. I want to give a big thank you, a big shout out to Gabby for hosting Winter Weed and being so incredible, to Rachel for creating the merch, and also to Gabby's subscribers who helped me come up with the title of my worst books video during our cute little productive reading sprints. I woke up feeling so accomplished at how deeply I annotated October Witches and I was absolutely not expecting to annotate that book to high hell. No One Needs to Know by Lindsay Cameron was also very heavily annotated. I thought going, as I started annotating them, I was like, oh, maybe these are books that I'll put up in my pango because 
I sell my books, my annotated books for more expensive in my Pango as well. And there's a fun pop socket that I know I'm not gonna use that goes with no one needs to know. So I was like, oh, that'd be a really good book. A nice little package to put up in my Pango. But I think I'm gonna hold on to these books for a while. If you are interested in purchasing my annotated copies, just stay tuned on my Pango. I might put them up sometime soon. I might put them up one day. I might never put them up. But my Pango is there for you if you would like to get some cheap new books or some pricier and personally annotated books from yours truly. Bye!